Hello everyone, welcome back to Pixel World Devlog. Uh, today I'm going to be showcasing what I've been working on with NPCs. Since this is a procedurally generated world, I wanted to randomly generate characters in the world that will drop random items, they'll give you random quests, they'll have random names. Uh, this is one creation. Uh, currently there is no... Um, I didn't specify the race for the body type, which I need to do. Obviously, this guy looks a little weird with green arms, uh, but we can actually see his name if I go ahead and attack him. This is a semi-randomly generated name where I just take a prefix and a suffix and combine them together. So Branium is what we came, came out with. Um, let me just run away from him, get up here, and finish him off. So they all have randomly generated armor um, from a very select choice, uh, randomly generated head and body and hair right now. So here's some other guys. This is a insectoid body with some armor pants. There's an, an insectoid headed person. Let's see what their name is. Bran Nick. It seems like Bran is uh, a very common <laughs> uh, prefix. Maybe it's uh, this regional um, dialect or something along those lines. So the system I had to completely refactor recently because I was using a Unity method that uses the Unity editor to actually refresh assets and I'll get into the code in a second here once I take down Brannick. Um, and why don't we jump into the code right now? Alrighty, so to show you guys how the randomly generated uh, NPCs code works, we got to start with the how the Unity object is set up. So previously, I actually randomly generated and combined these sprite sheets together so you can see what some of those legacy sprite sheets would look like right here where it actually combined each component the head the armor into one sprite sheet and read from that sprite sheet the only issue is you on runtime you can't actually refresh the unity database so that old code uh, had to be all commented out so now how the player is set up uh, is with components. So I have inside the player, um, I have an armor subset and with helm, chest, and legs, and then the hair, head, and body are inside the body components, which is kind of cool because you can turn off and on any of these components at will, rather than say removing the game object from a slot, which was more uh, challenging. Here, if someone's not where if a player is not wearing a helmet, I can just uh, deactivate the helmet sprite. Uh, the sprite object, actually. So let's actually look into the script itself. All right, so in VS Code now, start by setting up reskinning the component. We have to check the parent sprite. So the animations for the player are actually just based on the parent um, animator and sprite renderer. It's not sent down to the children animators, that would be crazy. Uh, so I have to set the actual sprite for each individual component that we were just looking at. Then we have to go in and get what the current texture is. So back in uh, Unity here, if you look at the parent player, we actually have a reskin player script which holds all of the textures. So on the NPCs, since the NPCs are an emulation of the player, um, they have the exact same script, the exact same setup, and when we randomly generate one, we just put in random uh, textures into these slots, and then they are read into here in this script right here. We convert the texture to path, which just checks the actual component type and then spits out the actual component in the parent player script. And then from there, we reskin the component, uh, which is also done within the reskin player script. We have this simple code that this was actually sort of brought up in a unity conference i can probably link the video down below of how to swap out sprite sheets by name 
uh, during runtime. Apparently they have the previous sprite sheet in memory at all times, so it's not the most optimized, but it worked for my situation, especially because there's not too much memory since it's all kilobytes because it's pixel art. Uh, so this works for me for right now. Um, and that just reskins the actual NPC with the individual component instead of the default sprite sheet that the animator was built with. And that's how all of the reskinning components work for NPCs and for the player as well. Uh, let's look at the random name generator. This is a really simple script actually. So I have beginning names or prefixes and end names or suffixes. I should really name those lists that because it's much simpler. But then to randomly generate a name when we actually want to generate a name, this function is called when we spawn a new NPC. And if it's an NPC name, then we take a random range between the number of prefixes and also the number of suffixes. And we add them together, we pick a random one. Uh, and this is actually, these are public lists that I just filled up that are on top of an NPC manager uh, game object. So all of the NPCs for me are held inside of the NPC manager. And in here I have all of the possible heads and hair sprite sheets that can be combined. So we can look at one of those. So I actually refactored these recently to have a lot more space. Space is really important when you're doing pixel art, and I have found. Uh, so I actually have a, for every frame of animation that we use, I have the component built out for all of those animations, and we just combine um, the individual sprite on runtime uh, in the unity like editor in the component like they're just all tied together and they animate together too uh, so that's pretty much how all the code works that's how the system works um, this new refactored system is so much better uh, and I've been working on improving the performance so it, I only actually make calls to update those sprites when they're actually changed why don't we just jump back into the game and play around a little more Alrighty, we're back and I am now playing as an insectoid. I customized my character a little bit, just wearing pants. Um, let's go walk around and see some weird looking NPCs and maybe fight them for all of their gold on their person. <laughs> so these are some of the default ones I always spawn in. Uh, here's a special one. What is their name? Jewel Roan. That is an interesting name I have never heard before in my life. So one improvement I definitely need to make eventually is allowing NPCs and enemies to jump up ledges. Like I can just run up here and hide uh, currently, which doesn't seem very fair, which I will be adding. Maybe I'll just allow everybody to do the same dodge move that, that the player can do. That probably seems like the best uh, alternative. Also need to change the layering of the dodge move so it's not like on top of you. So currently NPCs only spawn on the dirt tiles. Uh, I just have that setting temporarily. Doesn't really make any sense, but if I look around in a dirt patch area, I should probably run across some. <laughs> okay, here's another NPC I just ran across. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's like a frogman with some hair in their eyes. What is with Bran? Branian? Again? Is it the same name we had before? Gosh, that's funny. So they also have a chance to spawn holding a sword or not. Uh, otherwise, they just punch you. Um, and I also need to add the ability for NPCs to spawn. Ignore that building for NPCs to spawn with staffs like I do. All right, so stay tuned next time for working on character creation menu, working on tons of other different functions, maybe quests next time, adding quests to the NPCs that actually spawn so they have more of a purpose. But stay tuned for the next devlog. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, 
you could drop a like for Freo, my boy Freo over here, who has the shortest punch range ever, and he just got knocked out cold. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll catch you later. Bye.